the addition of Scott Steiner as the hitman for the main event mafia. Absolutely huge when you know his background, when you know his history. So outspoken, so unpredictable. I can't wait to hear Scott Steiner's thoughts on both the Young Guns and the main event mafia. You see, the last four months I've been home rehabbing my knee, but I've also been home watching these punks in the back disrespect the very people that paved the way for them to be in this business. And it's pissed me off. But I'll get you punk in a bit, in a little bit. Because I want everybody to recognize that this is the greatest assemblage of world champions to ever to come together. See, we've earned our respect and we come together because of respect. You see, we've earned respect night after night, year after year, giving it everything we've got. The blood, the sweat, and the tears for this business because we love it. And we've earned it. And you're looking at the best. You see, we've wrestled all around the world. You see, we wrestled in the Boston Garden on the same parquet floor that Boston Celtics won all their world championships. You see, we wrestled at Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the world. The same arena where Muhammad Ali fought smoking Joe Frazier for the World Championship. We've been to Tokyo and wrestled in front of 70,000 people. But the difference is between us and you punks in the back is you come out here in the impact zone, wrestle your match, go back to the locker room, grab your joystick, play your video games, look at your comic books, you call each other during the week, go online and play video games. You go online to these Mark Wrestling sites to see if you got a four-star match, a five-star match. What do you care what these geeks think? Ask us what we think, and we'll tell you that you suck. You see, I've been in this business 22 years, and before I came to TNA, I never heard of any of you punk You say you've been in TNA since the beginning, and you built this brick by brick. No, you're in the beginning because you had no other options. See, the truth be known, AJ Styles, you can go back to your redneck state, Georgia. Go back to your redneck town that you grew up in. Strap a billboard on your back. Walk down Main Street and nobody would know who you are. Hey, Small Joe, you can fly back to the Isles of Samoa. And the only question they'll ask is, who's the fat? Who's the half-breed? That's the difference between you punk and us. You see, when TNA runs a show, and wherever that show is in the world, the names on the marquee are the stars. The name on the marquee is the main event mafia. And when you guys turn on a TV set at home, you turn on the TV set to see the stars. Now you punks in the back. Now you curtain jerkers. The only the closest thing you're gonna be coming a star is when you step in the ring with a star. And the closest you're gonna come to greatness is when you step in the ring with us and sniff our greatness. 
It's a new day here in TNA. And we are here to kick your But we are gonna kick your And we're gonna look good doing it. Well, Samoa Joe can only take so much of the verbal and vocal abuse from Scott Steiner. This Sunday at Turning Point, Samoa Joe looks to gain payback against Kevin Nash. But first tonight on Impact, he has a showdown with the main event Mafia's hitman, Scott Steiner. First it's face to face, later they meet in our main event. Scotty, those are very, very strong words. And rest assured, hey, none of us here, none of us here are denying what you've done. All I'm saying is, uh, if we could understand half of what you said in the back, we might be offended. I mean, let's face it, Scott. That's true, all of you have been around the world, but we have too. But let me bring up a few events that we've been a part of. You see, Ultimate X right here in Orlando, Florida, that was us. Lethal lockdown for TNA. That was us. When it comes to high flying, when it comes to death defying, when it comes to the style that has defined this company and made it different than any company that any of you have ever been involved in, that was us. So I'll tell you what, we got ourselves a nice little war here. You're doing some nice little recruiting, that's great. And Kevin, the only reason I'm not down in that ring stomping your head in, you backstabbing traitorous son of a is come turning point, I want to savor every minute of that kicking. And Scott, tonight, just so you have something to talk about at the big millionaire club jerk, after I choke you out, you can tell Kevin what he's in for. Now boys, you've done a hell of a job recruiting a, quite a nice little big free agent there, but we've been doing some recruiting of our own. As a matter of fact, let me bring out our new soldier. Whoa, talk about landing a big fish. As you hear the music for Christian Cage, somebody that's been on the fence from the start of this thing, Mike. Unbelievable Samoa Joe able to convince Christian Cage to come to his side. Instant classic non-committal to this point, but as Samoa Joe just said, he has just picked up a huge free agent acquisition. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second, one sec. Not so fast, Joe. I thought I made myself clear when I told you that I don't need to pick a side and I'm not going to pick a side. But I don't mind lending a helping hand when it comes to these veterans. Now I'm standing in the back and I couldn't help but overhear you guys out here bad-mouthing, bad-mouthing, talking trash about this younger generation. And I just want to say, I don't think any of you are going to talk trash about me, because if you do, especially you, Booker. Yeah, I see your googly eyes back there. You talk any trash about the champ, I'll come down there and I'll slap that rug right off your head. Now the point I'm gonna make is this, I don't understand the problem you have with these guys trying to work hard, trying to climb their way up the ladder, trying to get to the point where you're at. Now Booker, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that you just stepped into the business and the next day became a six-time world heavyweight champion, did you? Because I didn't walk into the business and the next day become a two-time world heavyweight champion. I busted my for it. And that's all they're trying to do. Now, Booker, at turning point, I'm going to win a different title. That belt that's sitting over your shoulder right now. Make no mistake about it, Book. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to embarrass you. And at the end of the night, I'll be standing over your prone body with the belt high above my head, and you'll hear these words. I am legend. You see, you see, Christian, that's where you are wrong. 
because at the turning point, you will be right here, standing with us, the main event mafia. You see, you see in my country, Christian, you see my ancestors always say, you will know the true meaning of master because I am going to own your poke all over the place. No, can't you dig that? It's not only about the Legends Championship this Sunday, it's also about Christian Cage's freedom. Because if Christian doesn't defeat Booker this Sunday for that Legends title, then he must join the main event mafia. <laughs>